Hey folks, in this video we are going to be learning how to automate an email mailing list where the recipients are on BCC. You're going to be learning how to write a three file code that is going to have a custom function called data collector, an HTML email file, and then a code file that will collect data from a Google Sheet, turn it into a mailing list, and then put it on BCC so that when your script runs, the recipients of your email will not see the other individuals on the mailing list. So BCC is a way for you to um, have a mailing list where the addresses are not available to others. You will get to see them as you can see here, where you can see that I've sent it to my email address and then I have five aliases on BCC. That means that email address two can't see email address one, so on and so forth. The challenge with um, BCC email lists is that the values have to be passed as a string. So if you look at our code here, you can see that when I log out email list, which is coming from our data collector function, the result is going to be an array of data. So you can see this is an array of array, an array of arrays. So that's represented by these square brackets here. So you can see Matt Brigidy dev plus one is in square brackets, same thing with two, three, and they're all housed within a bracket, which is an array. The difference between the email list and the list is that these values are now appearing as um, in, in a string formatting where they're comma separated. If you attempt to pass email list to the BCC value down here, your, your email will not send. So in this video, we're going to talk through how to do this stuff and why to do this stuff. So with that out of the way, I'm going to close out um, my old script. I'm going to clear out these, this mailing list email that I've sent, and we're going to get started. So open up a blank Google Sheet. And we don't need any other columns in here. All we need is column A, which is where our mailing list is going to be entered. So I'm gonna bold that up, and then I'm gonna put a freeze on it so that we can scroll down and still keep our header in there. And I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room. And I'm gonna enter mapbrigidy.dev plus one at gmail.com. Fun fact about email, is that you can create aliases for your email by using the plus symbol. So I picked this up when um, somebody alerted me to um, the ability to do like Matt Bridgety plus Facebook at gmail.com. So that whenever I enter in my email uh, on, a, on a meta platform like Facebook or Instagram, I can then see who's sending me marketing emails. So that's a fun fact for you. So we're just gonna put in some fake email addresses here. We're going to name our spreadsheet email mailing list with BCC. And then we're going to go to the extensions menu and open up App Script. Going to let that create itself. And then let's rename our project. I'm going to call mine email mailing list on BCC. And then I'm going to clear out my boilerplate. You can keep it if you want to. We're going to go to the add file option and we're going to add another script file and we're going to call that function data collector. And then we're going to add an HTML file, which we're going to call email. Cool. We're going to start in our uh, data collector script and we are going to write a function called data capital C collector and we're going to pass one argument to this function which will be the sheet ID. First thing we're going to do is access the workbook. We're going to declare a variable for WB which stands for workbook. We're going to reference spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet. Next, we are going to access the sheets. So we're going to create a variable for sheets, and we're going to set that to wb.getsheets. 
Next, we're going to loop through the sheets. So we're going to use a for loop. And I'm going to use the character i as my variable. In my mind, it stands for iterator. I'm going to say for i in sheets. I'm going to use curly brackets. And now I am going to uh, set a conditional to evaluate the sheet ID input. So we're going to say if sheets square bracket I dot get sheet ID open parentheses double equal sign sheet ID underscore ID curly bracket enter then we are going to save the name to a variable. So we're going to declare a variable of sheet capital N name is equal to sheets iterator dot get sheet name. We're going to have open curly brackets, we're going to hit semicolon, and we're going to hit the down arrow once, down arrow twice, hit enter, left arrow twice, and we're outside of our for loop. We're going to access the sheet by saving it to a variable called sheet. And we're going to set that equal to wb dot get sheet by name. And then we're going to pass it that sheet name variable that we just created. Finally, we're going to collect the data. So we're going to use a return statement. And we're going to say sheet dot get range parentheses two one sheet dot get last row open parentheses minus one go to the left of your parentheses dot get display values open parentheses semicolon that is our completed function now that we've gone through it i'm going to attempt to explain what we did here and why we did it Data Collector is a custom function that I use in all of my work and all of my videos in various ways. Sometimes I call it get sheet by ID. In this instance, I've called it Data Collector. The reason that I do this is because Spreadsheet App has a native function called get sheet by name. Get sheet by name requires a single input, which is a string of what the sheet name is. So in the case of this untitled spreadsheet that I created, my sheet is named sheet one. That sheet has an identification number of zero. Get sheet by name requires me to enter single quotes sheet one in the get sheet by name function. However, that function is prone to error in the event that somebody changes the name from sheet one to mailing list. In the event that you share your workbook with someone else, that increases the probability that the name of that sheet could change at some time. In the event that the sheet name does change, your function will break, and thus your program will break, and you will no longer be able to automate the mailing of an email list or the production of a spreadsheet or any of that type of stuff. So, what we're doing here is we are accessing our active spreadsheet, which is this workbook here. In the event that you have a script that is not attached to your sheet, you can use open by ID to enter this value here and open any workbook that you have permissions to open. Next, we're going to collect every sheet in that workbook so that we can loop through them to evaluate if the sheet ID is equal to the sheet ID that we enter in our function. So the way the data collector works is that we are going to enter in a sheet ID up here, and then every single sheet in the workbook is going to be evaluated to see if it matches the ID that we pass to it. After we find the ID that matches the input of the function, we are going to collect the name of that sheet by using its ID. Therefore, we have established a logical framework to maintain continuity of our program in the event that the sheet name changes, because the sheet ID 
will never change unless the sheet is deleted or the workbook is deleted. Cool. So now that we have the ability to reliably collect data from our Google Sheet, we're going to construct a function called main. And we'll be doing this in our code.js file. Main will not take any arguments, so we're just going to pass an open parentheses, and then we're going to have two curly brackets. We're going to hit enter. Now that we've hit enter, we are going to collect the data from the spreadsheet. So in this case, these are email addresses. So we're going to call it var email list, and we're going to set that to data collector, and then we're going to pass our spreadsheet ID. In my case, the spreadsheet ID is zero. You may not have the same spreadsheet ID as I do, but you can find it after GID equals sign, and then it's just the numbers. Cool. So what we're going to do now is log out the results so that we can make sure that this is working properly. So we're going to do logger.log email list. We're going to hit save, and we want to see main pop up here, and then we're going to hit run. We're going to be asked to provide permissions to the spreadsheet so that our script can run. So you'll select the email address that you want to uh, permit, hit advanced, go to email mailing list, or whatever the name of your file is, hit allow, and now you should return results. So you can see I'm getting mapbridgety dev plus one and mapbridgety dev plus facebook at gmail.com. Wonderful. Those are the two emails that I have from there. Cool. So now that we've logged that out, what we're going to do is convert the array to a string. So we're going to create a variable named the list, and we are going to set it to email list dot two capital S string. Wonderful. Now we're going to connect to our HTML template. That's this file over here. So we're going to declare a variable called email, and we are going to say HTML service dot create template from file, and then we're going to pass in a string with the name of our HTML file. So my name is email.html, so I have to pass email there. So you can enter whatever the name of your HTML file is uh, in this section here. Next, we're going to evaluate the content of our HTML file. So we're going to declare the a variable of email content, and we're going to set that to email evaluate open parentheses dot get content open parentheses semicolon and now we're just going to send our email so we are going to use a gmail app dot send email we're going to do a parentheses now when you want to send something on bcc you need to have at least one email address uh, so i'm just going to use matt brigidy dot dev at gmail.com. Uh, we're going to use a comma. We're going to hit enter. And now we're going to enter in the subject of our email. So I'm going to say, welcome to my mailing list. And I'm going to do a comma. I'm going to say uh, a little warning that says this email uses HTML. I forget why you have to do this, but it's, it's a requirement. Um, and I was just passing, like, this is an HTML email, which I think is what populates if the HTML doesn't populate. We're going to use a comma, and then we're going to use curly brackets. Uh, I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to hit uh, type HTML capital B body colon, and then we're going to pass in our email content um, variable here. Uh, so what that's doing is that's evaluating the email template here so that then we can use it in the content of our email. Uh, we're going to do a comma, and then I'm going to type bcc colon, and then I'm going to pass in that list variable up here that has our HTML in a string. I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to go to my HTML file, and I'm not going to do a lot of advanced HTML here. We're just going to do a basic p tag and say, this is my mailing list with blind carbon copy. So we're going to do a closing p tag here, and this is enough. 
So what we're going to do now is uh, press run. We're going to have to reauthorize uh, access to our Gmail accounts so that we can send an email in there. Same process as uh, Google Sheets. We're going to hit allow, cross our fingers, and then we should send an HTML email to uh, one address and two on BCC. So you can see there are my security alerts. I open up my mailing list, and now you can see that I've successfully sent an email titled, Welcome to my mailing list. This is my mailing list with BCC. Show details, you can see mattbridgeta.dev, and you can see we have two emails on BCC. So to recap, we learned how to create a mailing list uh, where uh, individuals are on blind carbon copy. Uh, one note, um, this method only allows a maximum of 50 email addresses. So if your mailing list expands beyond 50, this solution will not work for you and you will have to develop um, another system for managing the volume of addresses that you're running to. Uh, I plan to publish a video about that in the coming weeks, uh, but for the time being, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I have a whole playlist on uh, automating things in Gmail. I also have a whole list on automating data collection in Google Sheets. Um, so I hope you'll check out my channel. Um, Hit me up in the comments section if you have any suggestions on future videos or if you have any questions. Uh, you have my email address now, so feel free to send me a message if there's anything that you want to talk to me about one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.